Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, I'm still in my temporary kitchen here, but I'm about to make some chicken stock, so I thought I'd show you how. Um, actually, what I'm gonna end up doing is making a sort of really rich chicken jus, like a, a chicken demi-gloss. Um, but it starts with chicken stock. Um, so the way we do that, I got some chicken. Um, these are just some chicken carcasses. Uh, you can use any bits of chicken you want, but really what you're looking for is um, plenty of connective tissue. Um, so you want bones with bits still attached to them because that connective tissue, um, that's the sort of collagen and gelatin. Uh, that's the collagen that's going to break down into gelatin as it cooks and give your, body, your stock body. Um, and then you also want little bits of meat attached to it because that's what's gonna give you flavor. Um, so chicken carcasses into a pot. Um, if you want, and you're in a rush, what you can do to speed up this process um, of extracting flavor from these is get, get yourself like a beater knife, a knife that you don't mind screwing up, you know, a really cheap nice knife or a cleaver, and then you can just whack, whack, whack. Um, and so the more you kind of whack it and the smaller the pieces you break, um, the less time it's going to take to extract stuff um, out of the chicken. But we're not in a rush today. And usually when I'm making chicken stock, I'm not in a rush. I'm gonna be here all day working so I can let this simmer on the stove top for a long time. All right, so the important parts of chicken stock, we got our chicken. Then these are just some random vegetables that I'm throwing in there, uh, mirepoix, basic. Um, these are some onion scraps that I had lying around in the fridge. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm peeling and I'm peeling them and taking off the, uh, the peels. Some people don't. Um, sometimes I don't. You don't really have to. Um, it just makes for a sort of clearer stock when you do peel it. Um, but if you're feeling lazy or you don't mind the dark color of the stock, then by all means, leave the peels on. Onions, celery, carrot. Those are the, the basic, um, well, in French they're called mirepoix, but they're the foundation of a lot of um, European cooking. Um, the onions and carrots provide sweetness. The onions also have that allium boost that really sort of um, accentuates other flavors. And then the celery adds a little bit of bitterness and veg vegetal notes. Okay, and so now we're just gonna cover this with water. Not a ton of water, we just want just enough to cover it by a little bit. Um, enough so that as it simmers, um, so this is gonna simmer for a couple hours, and as it simmers, you wanna make sure that the chicken stays submerged the whole time. So you wanna cover it by an inch or two um, so that as it reduces, the chicken still stays mostly submerged. So in a restaurant setting, um, what you would do is you'd have a giant, you know, a 20 gallon pot of chicken stock or veal stock. Um, veal stock is what's typically used to make demi-glace because veal is very high in connective tissue. Um, generally younger animals, so veal um, has lots of connective tissue and that gives that's what gives sort of restaurant stocks, um, restaurant demi gloss that really sort of sticky mouth coating texture. But chicken also has plenty of connective tissue, so you can make a really good demi gloss just with straight up chicken stock. Um, if you want, you can roast your bones or you can use the leftover bones from a, um, a roast chicken dinner, or, or, the, or from the rotisserie at the supermarket, just throw the, throw the chicken bones in there. Um, pre, chicken that's already been cooked, uh, so either roasting the bones or using a the bone, the carcass of a, of a chicken that you ate that's already been cooked, it won't have as much connective tissue, so your, your, your stock will not have as much body um, if you use that kind of chicken, but it'll still have a lot of good flavor. Um, the only other things I would add in here, which I'm probably not, oh, let's see, do I have enough? I've got some black peppercorns, so I'll add some black peppercorns here. If I had some bay leaves, I would add those, but um, all my bay leaves are in transit to my new kitchen right now, um, so I'm not going to. Other things you could potentially add in here is herbs, um, so parsley would be a good one because it's sort of neutral. Um, uh, yeah, parsley, bay leaf, those would be sort of the classic herbs. Um, if you want to go in a completely different direction, of course, you can do things like, instead of your carrots, onions, and celery mirepoix, you could add like slices of ginger and a couple of scallions, and then you'll get like a really nice, rich chicken stock that's good for uh, like egg drop soup or um, other kinds of Chinese recipes. Um, so really, your, your stock can go in any direction you want. The key, though, is to um, start with uh, with bones that have connective tissue and meat still attached to them um, because that's going to give it both body and flavor. Um, just enough water to cover it by an inch or two so that as it cooks um, and it reduces, your chicken stays submerged, um, and then whatever else you want. And so I'm gonna let this come up to a uh, simmer. In fact, I, so I have this on high heat right now. Um, as soon as it comes to a boil, which is going to happen when I cover up the camera and take my hand off again, 
And now we're almost at a boil. Um, so this is actually fine. Um, so you want to bring it until it's just barely simmering and then sh turn down the bur burner to maintain that bare, bare simmer. Um, and you're going to see a lot of the scum rises to the surface. Um, so what this is, is this is, well, bubbles of steam that have, that, um, have been trapped within um, this sort of protein matrix that um, is formed from the proteins that are being expelled from all the, the meat. Um, and so we want to get the scum off. Um, you know, it, it's it's all right if you want to leave if you want to leave it on there and and you just let the whole thing thing simmer. Um, you can strain this all off at the end rather than at the rather than at the beginning. Um, but straining um, skimming as you go um, will result in a clearer stock. Um, for some things, it's not that important if your stock is clear. You know, it's like if I'm making chicken soup, I don't really care if I have like a perfectly clear stock. Um, but what I, but like I said, what we're making here, what we're going to make with this stock is a reduced chicken jus. And anytime you reduce a stock, um, the clarity is actually very important because any sort of murkiness is going to get um, concentrated when you start to reduce it. Um, the flavor of the stock gets concentrated and the clarity of the stock also gets concentrated. So you want to make sure that your stock is nice and clear um, when you're, when you're planning on reducing it at all, um, you know, or if, or if you're working for like a tyrant French chef who... Um, insists on perfectly clear stocks all the time. So the other reason that you want to, um, that it's good to skim as you go rather than um, towards the end is because right now you can see it's, you know, I'm, I'm doing a relatively good job of getting just the scum off and not much of the liquid, um, the scum and the fat, which all float to the top. Um, but I'm still definitely getting some of that liquid off. Um, so if you skim at the beginning, um, the liquid that you're skimming off is still quite watery. Whereas if you skim at the end, the liquid that you pull that you're pulling off um, is full of chicken flavor, and so you want to try and reduce the amount of flavor. Um, you know, you, you minimize the amount of flavor that you you accidentally pull off, um, and so by skimming at the at the at the start um, and sort of skimming as it goes, as opposed to just waiting until the very end, um, you get a more concentrated and more flavorful stock. So um, you know, in a, in a restaurant setting, you would have one of those big big pots um you'd start it with chicken chicken but if you're making a chicken stock you'd start it with chicken bones um and, and mirepoix vegetables probably some fresh herbs as well um and then you know as pre as cooks are prepping things so for instance if i was like cleaning a bunch of mushrooms and um i had a bunch of mushroom bottoms um that weren't going to be used in a dish i would throw them into the chicken stock pot so that um you know that flavor gets used so the stock sort of becomes a place where any sort of food scraps that um, you know vegetable scraps that taste good in chicken stock um, so you know carrots onions celery the bottoms of all those things mushrooms certain herbs herb stems for sure um, things that don't make it into a, into another finished dish but still has flavor in it um, those can go into a chicken stock um, and then you'd also sort of have um, what you would do is you have a pot next next to it with a ladle stuck in it and as it simmers over the course of you know a chicken stock only needs to simmer for a couple hours um, a veal stock will simmer for like 12 hours in order to extract fully extract gelatin but um, as it simmers you know any cook who is working nearby um, and they see that the stock needs to be skimmed it sort of becomes like a communal task to skim the stock so you know if I was if I had a chicken stock going in a restaurant um, every time I walked by the station, I would stop, pause what I'm doing for a second, skim the stock, and then continue what I was doing. And that way, it gets sort of constantly skimmed, um, and you end up with a nice, clear stock at the end with very little work for an individual person. Like, it's a sort of one of these teamwork things, you know, one of those things that they tell you about. And yeah, all right, so now I'm going to let this simmer. I'm just going to adjust the flame so it stays at a bare simmer. You just want, like, a few lazy bubbles here and there. Um... This is even a little bit too much, but right around there is what I'm looking for. All right, so I'm going to let this simmer now for two hours, and then I will come back, and we shall see what we've got. And here we are a couple hours later, so we are at a bare simmer here. Um, I've skimmed this just a couple more times as it was going, but it didn't actually need too much skimming. Um, by the way, I, I bought these chicken carcasses um, from the... Japanese supermarket. Um, so, you know, your, your supermarket might sell chicken carcasses, in which case, lucky you. Um, but if not, you can save, um, you know, if you buy whole chickens and break them down yourself, save the carcasses in the freezer, or anytime you have any kind of sort of leftover chicken scraps, um, put them in a freezer bag and stick them in the freezer, and you can just add to that. And then once you have enough to make a stock, uh, pull it out of the freezer and make, make a stock. All right, so 
You can see um, we're at a bare simmer. Um, this is We've extracted about as much flavor as we can out of this chicken, so the rest of the stuff we're going to now just strain and discard the solids. Um, if you want to taste your stock, by the way, um, I've, I've, I've heard this from people before, they, they simmer a stock like this for a few hours on the stovetop, then they pull out a ladle full like this, they put it into a bowl or they just sip it, um, and the stock smells wonderful, but it doesn't have any flavor. Um, that's because the stock is completely unseasoned right now. There's no salt in it. Um, and without salt, you can't really perceive other flavors. Um, salt really, salt um, opens up, um, uh, what is it called? Neurochemical pathways that allow you to actually perceive other flavors. So without salt, most foods are gonna taste almost completely bland. Um, so if you do want to taste your stock, make sure that you add a pinch of salt to it before you do that. All right, so now I'm gonna strain it. I got a strainer set in a, um, a pot here. That pot is probably too small for all this stock, but we'll see where we get. Don't make the mistake that I made once of, um, I made about 20 gallons of stock, um, and then I set the strainer in the sink, strained it all out, and, saw, and then realized afterwards that the stock had just gone straight down the drain and, and that I had saved all the, um, you know, I had saved all the, the junk that you don't want from the stock and I had accidentally dumped the stock down the drain. Um, it made me want to cry. Huh, just, just right. All right, so now I'll take care of that later. That'll go in the compost. Actually, the vegetables will be going to my dog food. Um, and the rest will go into compost. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, um, so this stock base, by the way, this makes wonderful chicken soup. It makes, um, you know, it's, a, it's, chicken, it's, it's chicken stock. It's better than anything you're gonna get at, this, at the super, buy from the store. It's better than bouillon. Um, this is going to make wonderful sauces and soups. It's great for deglazing um, to make like a pan sauce. But what we're going to do now is take this one step further. Um, and we're gonna actually turn this into like a chicken demi-gloss. So a demi-gloss is a, um, a French, um, the a French term. It refers to a, um, a sauce, a stock that's been reduced until it is, um, well, until it glazes things. Uh, you, you can, you can re reduce things down to a full gloss, like a full glacé, which is like very, very thick. But a demi-gloss is like a sort of semi-thick um, mixture. Uh, a semi-thick reduction. So chicken actually has a lot of gelatin in it. Um, chicken stock, when you make it from real bones um, that have connective tissue, is going to have a lot of gelatin in it, and that gelatin is what's going to thicken up um, the sauce as it reduces. So you'll see. This is going to take a few hours now. I'm going to put it again over very low heat. We want it to be at a gentle simmer the whole time. Um, the reason that you reduce things slowly is because when you have a violent, if, if you're boiling violently, um, you're throwing off a lot of um, volatiles. A lot of the aromatics are going to fly out into the air. And if they're flying out into the air, then they're not left in the sauce. So when you reduce a sauce, you want to simmer it as gently as possible um, so that you retain as much flavor as possible. Um, and also because then you don't accidentally end up uh, burning it, which I've done before. But I've accidentally left pots of chicken stock or veal stock reducing down until they are completely dry and then they just cake onto the bottom of your pan and then there goes, you know, several quarts of stock that you were carefully reducing. So this is a three quart saucepan. So this is three quarts of stock that we have here. We're gonna reduce that down probably to about a cup or maybe half a cup. Um, and that's gonna take a few hours. So I will come back here in just a few hours. All right, so it's been a couple of hours now. Um, you can see this is reduced down to about Oh, about a quarter of what it was before. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to transfer it to a clean, smaller pan. Um, and as I do that, I'm going to run it through a strainer again. Um, now, if I had a chinois, you know, like a super fine mesh strainer, that's what I would be using right now. Um, and I do in my other kitchen, but I don't here, so I'm just gonna use this regular fine mesh strainer. Um, and this should capture some of the bigger chunks of, uh, like impurities and gunk that are starting to form clumps in there. You'll notice as you go that, um, what, what, what looked like a relatively clear liquid is going to start getting little lumps of clumps of stuff. Um, the proteins are going to start sticking together. Um, and that actually makes them easier to strain. Um, and then we're going to let this keep going now. 
It'll keep reducing. As it goes, I might skim it a couple more times. Um, eventually what you might see is like a skin forming on the top of um, clumped up proteins. Um, that's very easy to skim off. It's just at this stage when you start, start skimming more, you just gotta be really careful not to pull off too much excess liquid because you know now that it's reduced by three quarters, for every like teaspoon that you pull out of here, accidentally pull out of here, it's the equivalent of like having pulled out four teaspoons at the beginning. So now that it's concentrated, you really want to be very careful with the way um, that you start skimming it. Um, if you want to get like a super, super clear stock, you can you can um, use a chinois or you can layer uh, cheesecloth into your fine mesh strainer and pour it through. Um, you know, honestly, for home cooking, I don't think that matters much. Um, you know, it, you won't get like the level of clarity um, and the, per the perfect clarity that you would get um, if you're, you know, doing this at like a Michelin starred restaurant, like at a French restaurant. Um, but for home use, uh, even without, um, perfectly clarifying it, uh, it's still gonna come out really delicious. Um, and you'll see at the end, you, you, you'll see. All right, so I'll, I'm gonna let this continue reducing now um, and I will be back in just about, about one more hour. Oh boy, we're getting down to the wire now. So I emptied out the, um, I emptied out the stuff I was skimming and cleaned the ladle because I don't wanna start reintroducing any of the gunk that was in there back. Um, so you can see here, there's like a sort of skin that's formed on the top and that makes it really easy to kind of pull it off without really getting too much of the liquid below. Do you see that little skin? And then I can pour off some of the liquid, dump the skin back, just get these little fuzzy guys out. So we're getting more and more concentrated flavor and gelatin here. Um, now you can see like at this point it's going to start to, you see the bubbles like start to get bigger. You can see that it's actually getting thicker, that it's not just like a super watery liquid anymore. That is a good sign. Incidentally, you cannot do this with store-bought chicken stock um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, because store-bought chicken stock generally does not actually have a lot of um, Connective tissue doesn't have a lot of gelatin in it, so it will never thicken up. It'll just get watery. It'll stay watery as you reduce it. Um, more importantly, it uh, it has too much salt in it. Um, so even, I haven't added any salt to this at all, um, but if I were to taste it now, generally when, when, when you make a reduced chicken jus like this, you don't have to add any salt to it because just the, yeah, it's already pretty salty. The salt that's naturally present in the chicken already um, is going to concentrate and is going to be enough to um, to season this all. All right, we're getting really close down to the line here. Um, so at this point, you want to sort of really carefully keep an eye on it, check it every few minutes because you don't want it to burn because you're going to waste all that work that you just did if you let it burn. So, all right, I'm going to go and I will be back in just about 10 more minutes. All right, so here we are. You can see now how thick it's gotten and how when it bubbles, the bubbles are kind of large because the liquid is so viscous. Look at this. Gorgeous. All right. We're going to call this done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into this container here. I am going to scrape out as much as I can because I don't want to waste any of this. This is uh, the stuff that dreams are made of. Mm. Um, all right, mm, so good. All right, so when you're reheating this stuff, um, oh, so I'm gonna end up probably using this, I'll spoon it over some some roast chicken. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll get another chicken and I'll roast it and then I'll use this to sort of enhance the chickeniness of the, uh, of the chicken. In fact, I'm gonna take the camera off my head for a second just to make sure that you can sort of see the texture of this stuff and how gorgeous it is. Look at that. Thick, rich. Um, when you when you cool this stuff down, it cools into like a hard rubber ball because there's so much gelatin in it. Um, and so when you reheat it, the best way to reheat this stuff is actually not to put it back on the stovetop, um, but to microwave it because that way you can you can get it all um, liquefied again without any chance of accidentally burning it or over reducing it. All right, there you have it. So you can see how the that full three quarts of stock was reduced down into just a few tablespoons of this really rich 
Ju. And that is why fancy restaurants are expensive. Lots of labor. All right. Mm, that is good stuff. I know Shabba's going to want some here. Yeah, you want to lick the spoon? No, you don't want to lick it after I've already licked it? <laughs> oh, well. Here you go, Shabba. Try this. Try that. How about it? <laughs> you want some too? Come on, here. Oh, Shabba's going to get it. All right. I'm going to turn the camera off so that I can go feed Hamon some of this jus. Um, yeah, that's it. Kind of a weird episode this time, huh? Um, all right, there you go. Bye-bye. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. So this stuff, um, by the way, once you have a reduce like this, um, it's really delicious on its own. Um, there are some other things you could do with it, though. You could use it as the base for a number of other sauces. So you can reduce, say, some white wine or some port or some marsala um, and then add it to here. Um, and it'll make a delicious wine sauce. Um, when you're reheating it, you could also reheat it and then stir in some butter at the very end. Um, uh, mounting with butter is a very common French technique. It makes the sauce a little, a little sort of mellower and more round. The flavor it rounds the flavors out a little more, if that makes sense. Um, but of course, you can just use the, the jus exactly as it is. Um, you can use it also on steak. Like it doesn't have to go on chicken. It can go on steak. It can go on your pork chops. It can go on, I mean, anything that you really want to add, like a sort of concentrated meaty flavor to um it'll do well anyhow um this is a rich chicken jus uh rich chicken demi gloss um thank you for joining me today stay safe uh wear a mask and guys gals non-binary pals i will see you next time bye bye Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me. Uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.